Welcome to Internet Protocol with Tish. I'm Letitia Mile. Remember the movie The Net? The one where Sandra Bullock plays a software engineer whose life is damaged and then destroyed by hackers who installed computer software on her system. Throughout the film, Bullock's character is electronically stalked, tracked down, often right to the exact stairwell of a specific building. It gives me the creeps just thinking about it. But the truth is that this type of stalking is not science fiction anymore. It's relatively easy for virtually anyone to do. Today, technology provides many ways to find, monitor, and track people to learn all about them, to determine exactly where they are or where they hang out. It's called cyber stalking. If you don't know much about it, you might want to listen up. A few months ago, we tried an innocent little experiment to prove a point. A friend went on vacation, and we wanted to see if we could find out where he was staying. Since we knew he had a smartphone with him, we used an app to locate the phone. And full disclosure here, since he's a friend, we had linked up our phones just in case one phone got lost. The phone tracking app dropped a pin on a map, giving us a bird's eye view of what appeared to be a hotel in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. We got the building's address from the dropped pin and input it into a free popular online mapping service. That gave us a street level view of the building and confirmed our suspicion that it was in fact a hotel. Now we had every reason to believe he was staying there or at least visiting there at the moment. From the placement of the pin over the building, we could figure out his room was definitely on the right side of the building, probably facing the street and probably the third room from the end. Since GPS data doesn't include altitude information, we still couldn't tell the floor he was staying on, but we knew he probably was staying in just one of a handful of rooms. From past trips, we remembered that he prefers rooms on upper floors, so that led us to believe he must be staying on either the fourth or fifth in one of those two rooms. Our best guess was that he had checked into this room. We later found out that we were right. So without even knowing where on earth he was, it took us less than 25 seconds to track our friend down to the exact hotel room 3,639 miles away. This is just one example of how software designed for one purpose can be used for another. Think about that when you attach your location to a Facebook or MySpace post or a tweet or an IM or share your location by checking in via a growing number of apps or even post a photo online while on vacation. Many cameras on the market today embed GPS location information on each photo's metadata. It doesn't take a genius to determine the exact location of that party you're at. All it takes is you posting a photo online of the party while it's happening and someone downloading it into virtually any image cataloging program. This is pretty creepy stuff, but we feel you have to be aware of it since there are so many ways we all inadvertently leave a trail of the physical locations we visit regularly simply by sifting through the little clues we ping to the world almost routinely. Cyberstalking is when a person repeatedly uses the internet or other forms of electronic communications to harass or frighten you by sending threatening email messages, for example. The definition is constantly changing because of how quickly technology is progressing. And although some annoying or creepy emails may be enough to freak you out, they may not be enough to get the cops involved. Not all cyberstalking is illegal. Some common situations may border on stalking, but don't quite fit the definition of cyberstalking. Often motivated by jealousy, anger, or hate, stalkers in cyberspace many times are former lovers, friends, co-workers, or classmates. But it's a good bet that there's somebody you know and they'll be savvy enough to try and hide behind the apparent anonymity the internet provides. No computer? Well, cyberstalkers love to use things like GPS data, transmitted by smartphones mostly. Allow your phone to access and transmit location-based data, and guess what? Not only can you find your phone if you lose it, but others can find you, right down to a view of the building you're in. Think it's cool on social media sites to check in and tell people where you are every hour, what bar or restaurant you've been checking into with your friends? This is just another way a cyber stalker can pinpoint your location or track your movements. Post your whereabouts on any social media website in real time and you've just put out a welcome mat. For more on this, let's bring on Michelle Garcia. She is the director of the Stalking Resource Center out of Washington, D.C. Michelle, speak to the fact that the Internet is certainly allowing a lot of criminals out there to become cyber stalkers. Absolutely. We know that technology has really changed how we look at stalking and how we respond to victims and the work that we do to hold offenders accountable. That 
when we talk about technology, we talk about technology very broadly, but the Internet, computers are one of the primary, primary types of technologies that we see stalkers using these days. Speak more to that as far as beyond the obvious, the differences between stalking in real life, if you will, and stalking online. Sure. When we look at stalking, we think technology facilitates behavior that stalkers have always engaged in. It's not as if the technology has created necessarily a whole new breed of stalkers. It just makes it much easier for them to do what they have always done. So one example is if a stalker prior to technology had wanted to track everywhere a victim went, they may have to follow them, they may have to wait for them places. But now with something like a GPS device, they can go online and they can actually track that victim's movements from their home computer. What is it that we're doing inadvertently that might allow a cyber stalker to track us so easily if they so want to? Well, I think that one of the things we have to recognize is that technology is part of our everyday lives. We all use different types of technology on a regular basis. And so it's, it's looking at how we can engage with technology in a safe way or a safer way if you are a stalking victim. That it, doesn't really make sense to tell people to not use a cell phone or not use email or not get on a computer because they are such parts of our daily lives. What we have to recognize is that compute that stalking offenders are really exploiting technologies that in most cases have legal and legitimate purposes. Uh, shouldn't we be concerned though about putting our whereabouts at every given minute on the internet? Well, I do think that um, it is something to be mindful about, and so particularly for someone who already is a stalking victim, being more cautious about the type of information that you put out there. We live in a culture today where people, many people are constantly updating whether it's their status, their profile, whether they're tweeting, what they're doing every few minutes, and there are really pros to that and there's cons, and the con is if you happen to be a stalking victim, that's really valuable information for a stalker. Really, for most of us, is trying to find that place that is a balance between freedom and safety. So I want to engage with the technology. I want my friends and family to know where I am or what I'm doing or where I'm going. But I also have to find that balance that's right for me in terms of maintaining my own safety. But then once you become a victim of a stalker, what's one of the things you do beyond calling police to keep yourself safe? There's actually a, a number of things that victims can consider. So one thing that we strongly recommend is that they get connected with local service providers. So a victim services agency or a domestic violence program or sexual assault program that can work with them, explore what options are available to them in their community. So where they can get support, where they can get assistance. Also looking beyond just reporting to law enforcement, our criminal justice system, looking also at our civil justice system. So could this person get an order of protection in order to get the offender to stay away from them, stop communicating with them? And local service providers can explain all of these options that are available to them. Without sounding too dramatic or melodramatic, is, it, is there anywhere anyone can hide if they're the victim of a stalker in, in cyberspace? Well... I think there are things that people can do to make themselves safer. Um, it's really challenging these days because privacy is becoming less and less of a, a, a reality for many people that our information is out there in a whole host of different ways. And so you can go online and for less than $100, I can find out pretty much everything about you. I can find out every place you've ever lived, your phone numbers, who your relatives are, businesses you own, your criminal history, some of your credit information, everything about you. And so it does become very difficult not impossible, but very difficult. And what's great is there are programs in place across the country that can help victims in terms of hiding, making themselves safer, getting away from a stalker. Michelle Garcia, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you. Now we have a better feel for what cyber stalking is. So let's hammer out some internet protocol to protect you against it. Don't publish your exact location by checking in in real time. A cyber stalker is going to have a harder time with check-ins that say, we had a blast last night in the city, as opposed to, we're having a few laughs right now at Joe's Bar on Main. Use social sites that transmit your location and apps that do the same sparingly on your smartphone. Don't just give blanket permission for any app to transmit or update your current location automatically. Go through them one by one and determine which ones you want to allow to transmit location-based information and which ones you don't. 
Remember, Facebook status updates can also give clues as to where you are and what your regular routine is. Posting something like, hey, I just finished my regular Wednesday Pilates workout is all a cyberstalker needs to know in order to plan a surprise appearance next Wednesday afternoon at your gym. A workaround for this is to customize your Facebook privacy settings to show your posts and status updates only to friends. But for this to have any success at all, you also have to be sure your friends list includes only the people you know and trust. Keeping your ex on your friend list after your breakup gives him or her access to your personal data. A rule of thumb, if you choose to lose contact with someone, lose it completely. And that means deleting them from your contacts, unfriending them on Facebook, perhaps even putting them on your block list. Stop following them on Twitter. Delete them from your IM programs. Delete them from apps like Ping Chat too, which is like IM apps, but your buddies can see where you are on a map. Speaking of breakups, when many people split, they'll often feel the urge to change the locks on their door, if for nothing else, a sense of closure and security. You should do the same with your passwords. People we are close to either know our passwords or can easily figure them out. Even the most amicable breakup can turn ugly if one party decides to continue accessing the other's email account via webmail long after the relationship has ended or still has access to that shared calendar that worked so well when you were a couple. Google yourself about once a year and delete all those online profiles you find you've created along the way but don't use. We're all guilty of this. But by limiting your online presence to only those profiles you really need and use, you'll also be limiting the information available to a possible cyberstalker. Strip all GPS data from the photos you post online. This is as simple as changing the original file name on the photo. Changing the photo's name before you upload it will delete all the metadata, including any GPS embedded coordinates. In all honesty, this is really easy to do on a computer, but it's harder to do on a cell phone and virtually impossible to do when you're out having fun with friends and want to post a picture as the night develops. Some social networks strip this location data out automatically, but others don't. And if you find your pictures upload along with their GPS data, you might want to wait until you can change the photo's file name and upload them from your computer. I know it's not as fun or spontaneous as posting them immediately, but it's a safer strategy in the long run. Most importantly, if you honestly feel you're being cyberstalked, notify the police. They can help you determine the legal steps you should take to stop the stalker and possibly press charges. There you have it, Internet Protocol on Cyberstalking. I'm Letitia Mile. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Internet Protocol. We look forward to seeing you again next time.